If you ask someone the time these days, they're likely to pull out a cell phone out of their pocket. Makes you wonder, are the days of clocks uh, winding down? Well, fortunately, there are people who appreciate clocks as intricate, interesting devices. Rob Wiles takes us to Columbia to meet a couple and view their timely collection. We're so glad you could come today. Visitors often come to Kathy Fuston's home in Columbia because she is, first of all, a gracious hostess. And even though she's a busy professional woman, she still has time on her hands. And on the walls, and the mantles, and the tables. Clocks everywhere in a collection begun by her husband Steve's father, Roy Fuston, who learned to appreciate clocks at an early age. My dad started out learning to work on clocks and watches back when he was in high school. He soon developed uh, the skills good enough and he would market his services at high school and the teachers would allow him to work on clocks and watches during study hall in high school. So the kids would bring their families clocks and watches in one day um, when they would come to school, he would try to work on them and then send them home that afternoon if he could. Later, Roy opened a jewelry store in Woodbury and his appreciation turned into a world-class collection. Started collecting them early 60s and then progressed and kept collecting and got into buying and selling and trading and uh, turned his passion into an antique business. and the late 60s and operated that for over 40 years. Steve always liked the clocks. As a young boy, he got the honor of winding some of them. And so when Roy passed away, Steve and Kathy found themselves the owners of eh, just a few clocks. We got uh, just some over 500 when he passed away. 500? It was over 500 in his house and then another 100 in the shop. I don't know, I hardly know what to say to that. Tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> boing, boing. So many lovely and fascinating clocks. I had to ask Kathy and Steve to tell us about just a few. We have a beautiful E. Howard clock that we have. It's a marble clock, and it was from a railroad station in the 1870s. It's very beautiful and very heavy. There's a beautiful figural clock. Um, in the gentleman's parlor, it's Diana, the huntress, and with her dog, and it's just gorgeous. The, the bronze casting on it is beautiful. It's from the early 1800s. Um, it's, a, it's just a beautiful, large, heavy clock. And I think one of our favorites is one we got for our anniversary. We bought it for each other. It's on the dining room mantle. It's fish scale copper from Brussels, Belgium and it's, it's from the 1870s and it, it has the garniture set with it and it's just, just beautiful. The patina on it's lovely. We have a gorgeous clock in the kitchen that's a later E. Howard, about 1900, that was um, used as a time clock, but it's so beautiful and the case is cherry and just gorgeous and it's hard to believe it had such a utilitarian function. They would set up a master clock that would then run by wires and keep the clocks throughout a factory regulated and everything would work off of that clock. They've taken the works out of the timekeeping works out of it, but it still keeps perfect time. All the clocks in the collection work, although Kathy and Steve only wind a couple at a time. I mean, just imagine all 500 going at one time. Just the noise would be, we wouldn't be able to stand it, of the ticks which would not have bothered Roy Fuston one bit. Dad would have a lot of the clocks operating and it would come time for the 10 o'clock news that we all like to sit and watch and you'd start hearing them go off about 10 minutes before and they would keep dinging till uh, about 10 minutes after and then right on the hour, if there was a breaking news story, it was almost impossible. <laughs> to catch because all the clocks were going off right at 10 o'clock. So, and he liked for them to work and run on time, but it's 
physically impossible to keep that many clocks regulated to the second. So uh, we dealt with it. Interesting how something like a clock, which marks the span of our lives, can bring to mind something from long ago. I remember as a little boy going to get my hair cut in a little town in Texas, and it was, I don't know, mid-50s, and it was hot, no air conditioning, and the only sound, the guy was using scissors, of course, the only sound was that clock. Tick, Put me clock, right to sleep. Tick, tock. And yeah. when they're regulated and synced, Mm -hmm. then that is so very it's, calming. It's just uh, hypnotic. That's why my dad wanted a clock in his bedroom, so even when we traveled to help him sleep. The Fustons enjoy sharing their clocks and are glad to have visitors to their home, but selections from the collection are sometimes put on public view in places like the James K. Polk home in Columbia. The curator here says visitors enter the exhibit, look around and say, wow, it makes sense. Such beauty, such craftsmanship on view in Kathy and Steve's collection, but also so many memories recalled of clocks marking the passage of our lives one second at a time.